Dunkin' Donuts claims America runs on Dunkin', but the truth is, America runs on coffee. In fact, a lot of the world does. And when coffee gets a bad rap for causing things like insomnia, jitters, and heartburn, there are genuine upsides to the drink that don't all have to do with clawing your way out of a hangover. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the incredible things coffee does to your body. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. And after that, please leave a comment and let us know what other beverage topics you would like to hear about. Okay, time to percolate these facts. We're all familiar with the stereotype of the coffee-deprived American adult who can't think, speak, or really do anything until they've had that first cup of joe. There is something special about that first cup of coffee that makes everything right with the world, and we mean that scientifically speaking. A study from 2011 shows that moderate coffee consumption decreases the risk of depression in women, lowers the risk of suicide in men, and generally puts you in a better mood by acting as what is basically the tastiest antidepressant on earth. It's also been proven to positively enhance your mood by boosting serotonin, noradrenaline, and dopamine production, something which coffee manufacturers should probably be printing on the side of the package in really big letters. So it isn't your imagination if that steaming cup of morning coffee makes you notably less irritable. It's science. If all coffee did was put you in a better mood, that would already make it a minor miracle. But it gets better, because coffee can also do wonders for your long-term memory, something you should probably write down, unless you drink a lot of coffee. Studies show that a boost of caffeine before a demanding task can increase processing and memory retention. It also helps with focus, reaction times, and reasoning. And the good news doesn't stop there. According to the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, drinking at least three cups of coffee a day could stave off Alzheimer's. It also targets the part of the brain affected by Parkinson's disease, reducing the risk of the disorder by 25% in men and a little less than that in women. If this is making you want to pause the video and run to Starbies, grab us a latte and make sure they measure the espresso shots in front of you. They like to get cute sometimes. Diabetes is a chronic, long-lasting condition that affects how your body processes food into energy. No matter how cool Wilford Brimley made it look, So, you got diabetes. It's something you want to avoid if possible, and coffee drinkers can take solace in knowing that their java addiction may be helping them to keep diabetes at bay. That tasty cup of joe targets your insulin behind the scenes by increasing adiponectin, one of the many things that helps to regulate blood sugar and insulin levels. Pair this with magnesium and antioxidants, and that single cup of brewed beans becomes a powerful disease-fighting blend of donut lubricant. The effects are temporary, of course, and they don't really apply to people who already have diabetes. In those cases, blood sugar levels and sensitivity to coffee can vary from person to person, so you should check with your doctor before you make any changes to your diet. Put that coffee down. People have long considered coffee to be bad for the heart, but that belief was based on misinformation, likely spilled by the haters of Big T. The good news is that there appears to be no link between increased risk of heart disease and coffee. And the better news is that emerging evidence even suggests that coffee may actually be good for the heart. They are beans. In fact, overall, coffee has been shown to be a powerful ally with respect to cardiovascular health. Moderate coffee consumption has proven to slightly decrease heart attack risk for both genders, although the effects are stronger in women. And it's not just heart attacks that coffee helps either. Three to five cups of java a day can significantly reduce your risk of stroke. Now, admittedly, that is a load of coffee, enough to fuel even the most rugged long-haul trucker. But what if we told you coffee also helps decrease the risk of cognitive heart failure and coronary heart disease? Because it does. Anyone else beginning to wish they had stock in Starbucks? If you're the type of person who likes to come home after a long, hard day and have a beer or two, here's some bad news for you. Alcohol isn't great for your liver. But here's some good news for you. The coffee you drink in the morning can help save the liver you're beating up at night. Java reduces the levels of enzymes that indicate liver damage and works to fight off liver cancer and cirrhosis. Just two cups a day can reduce the risk of hospitalization and mortality from liver disease by 50%. The two substances in coffee that are responsible for this potentially huge life-saving perk are cafestol and kawiol. But like anything, the results will vary from person to person. So please don't mistake your morning coffee for a miracle elixir that will regenerate your liver like Spock in Star Trek III after a night of serious binging. 
could expect one to order poison on a bar. Not logical. And for optimal results, you need to be a regular coffee drinker and not just a fair weather friend who only shows up to party. I always have coffee when I watch Radar, you know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. And while we're on the topic of livers, coffee has also been shown to decrease the risk of liver cancer. Three or four cups a day may decrease the risk by 38 and 41 percent, respectively. That's a lot of percents. We've all heard that carrots are good for our eyes, but would it be great if there was something that did the same thing but tasted like coffee? Well, there is, and it's coffee. Because scientists are discovering that coffee is actually amazing for your vision. And not just because right around the sixth cup you can start to see through time. It contains chlorogenic acid, or CLA, a powerful antioxidant shown to prevent eyesight deterioration from retinal damage. In fact, despite caffeine being the ingredient that gets all the attention, like Bono, CLA is a much more significant component. Raw coffee contains 7-9% to CLA versus 1% caffeine. So, guess the next step is coffee eye drops? Better let it cool off a bit first. Recent studies show that antioxidants in coffee reduce the risk of some cancers. Uh, the disease, not people born in June and July. So you guys still need to wear pads when you rollerblade. Better yet, it appears that the more coffee you drink, the better protected you are. Something for which we imagine the CEO of Folgers made some sort of Faustian bargain. In a nutshell, four or more cups a day of your favorite brew could potentially spare your health and save your life. Coffee can help safeguard you from oral, uterine, prostate, and brain cancers. The Journal of the National Cancer Institute even found that coffee drinkers were less at risk for melanomas. And as published in the Experimental Hematology and Oncology Journal, one study found that caffeine curbs certain proteins in lung cancer cells, which can prevent these cells from growing and multiplying. And according to other research, women who drink at least three cups of coffee a day lower their risk of developing endometrial cancer by 19%. Coffee has been shown to slow weight gain, albeit only for the short term and not if you get it in a frappuccino. Long story short, chlorogenic acid, the compound in coffee that's associated with improved eyesight, may also help to slow carbohydrate absorption. In addition, the caffeine in coffee can contribute to a metabolic rate increase of 3 to 11 percent. That's because caffeine speaks directly to the nervous system, telling it to break down fat cells, which directly leads to the burning of fat. As always, the results will vary from person to person, and the most profound results occurred in leaner individuals. Coffee also helps with weight loss by enhancing athletic performance. Studies show an 11 to 12 percent boost on average as Java mobilizes fatty acids from fat tissues. At this rate, it's only a matter of time until Dunkies is banned from the Olympics. However, before you go sucking down entire pots of coffee in hopes of a permanent trim figure solution, keep in mind that studies have only shown this to work temporarily. The body will eventually become immune to the effects of coffee, and it will cease to work as well as it may have earlier. So make it count. In case all this coffee talk hasn't perked you up enough, get ready for this dry roasted bombshell. Coffee makes you better in bed. Okay, ready for the steamy details? Actually, better let that cool for a bit. You can't take a sip of details right when the server brings it out. For women, drinking coffee increases the blood flow to the genitals, which means increased arousal, which is never a bad thing for anyone involved. A cup of coffee 15 to 30 minutes before a quick roll in the hay will ensure optimal arousal in addition to a caffeine boost for energy. This benefit also extends to the casual coffee drinker who may only have one cup a week. Meanwhile, men who drink three cups a day are less likely to deal with erectile dysfunction because caffeine relaxes penile helicine arteries and increases blood flow to the area, making erection more achievable. And in the United States alone, over 18% of men who are at least 20 years old suffer from ED. So we expect this is welcome news for many Keurig owners. It's hard to imagine a better sales pitch for a product than the claim that it lowers your risk of death. And coffee may actually help prevent death, for a while anyway. It's not a piping hot mug of Dracula blood or anything. Before you get too excited, let's be clear that coffee isn't a fountain of youth, though it may be the closest thing we have to it. David Furman, PhD, and consulting associate professor at Stanford University explains, more than 9% of all non-communicable diseases of aging are associated with chronic inflammation. Why is this important? Because consumption of coffee results in lower activity in gene clusters associated with a certain inflammatory protein. Or in other words, drinking coffee can fight inflammation. 
and in a study from the University of Southern California with over 180,000 participants, researchers found that drinking three cups of coffee a day reduced the risk of premature death by 18%. Even just one cup a day lowered the risk by 12%. Coffee may not help you to live forever, but it may tack on a little more time. Time you should spend drinking coffee. So what do you think? What's your coffee routine? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.